What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. There's so much that I missed. I didn't even film anything while I was in Daytona and I am super ashamed of that. And you guys should, uh, you know, shame me down in the comments because when we were down there, it was just absolute madness for the truck meet. They said there's 80,000 people that came to Daytona for that weekend and it showed. The amount of trucks that were there was incredible. Absolutely blew Jeep Beach out of the water. But the good news is now that the two shows, Jeep Beach and Daytona Truck Meet are out of the way, we don't have to be in the booth anymore for RBP. Um, there's still gonna be plenty of pop-up meets and stuff here in Columbus I'm gonna take the Jeep to. But that means we get to have a little bit of fun with the Wrangler. If you guys get down there and smash that like button, make it a thousand, make it, yeah, let's make it 2,000 likes and I will absolutely beat the shit out of this Jeep off-road, or as much as I can here in Ohio, uh, before I hit some major trails along the way. I mean, just look at how pretty she is. I mean, the paint's all nice, no dents in it just yet. So uh, yeah, we need to use these mud terrains and these bead locks and get this thing off-road and get it some mud. I know you guys have been waiting for that for such a long time, but again, I just wanted to wait for the Daytona truck show to be over, so that way I didn't have to deal with like super detailing up underneath anything and all that kind of stuff. But now that we are back, we are gonna do something that we have been meaning to do ever since we put the new wheels and tires on, and that is to reset our tire size for the speedometer because it is off, uh, especially when you have the 38s. When we were rolling down to Daytona, we actually rolled down on stock wheels and Ryan hauled my 38s in the bed of his truck. So we actually got better gas mileage and my Speedo actually wasn't all that off with these, even though these, aren't really the ones that come on my Jeep. These are a little bit smaller than the 33s. But nonetheless, we got better fuel economy and the Speedo wasn't as off as the 38s on the highway. We have a setup here from Flash Cow for Jeeps, uh, Super Chips. If you guys don't know anything about these little calibrators, uh, you could do so much with them. I know a lot of people like the Taser JL or the Taser Mini. Uh, these will actually be a little bit less expensive. And uh, there's a lot of features that the Taser does that this will also do uh, if you're not looking for like a whole bunch of crazy, like insane stuff, like you're gonna be doing like that light show feature or whatever comes on the Taser JL and you just need to like recalibrate a couple things, this will do more than enough. All right, so first things first, we have to remove uh, the dash here and uh, a long time ago, I installed a auto start stop like module so that way it made the auto start stop button memory so that way I didn't have to hit it every time I got in. I just hit it once and then the next time I got in, it would automatically be off and the next time I got in, it'd be automatically off. So I didn't have to mess with that anymore. With the uh, new Super Chips module, we can actually set that uh, through here so we don't have to, we actually don't need this module anymore because it's also taking up the same slot that this needs anyway. Easy enough, that came out. So if anybody wants this uh, smart stop start, hit me up in the comments below. So underneath your dash, you're gonna find these two plugs. They're gonna be straight up underneath uh, the left-hand side here. You're gonna take the uh, Super Chips module and just plug it in. Seriously, it's just that simple. So the next thing you're gonna wanna do is plug the Super Chips module into your OBD2 and you can see we have that already ready, set and go. You're gonna have your vehicle in the run position. So basically it's gonna be on but not actually running. But you can see here, you go through all the different settings. You can set your sway bar unlock, your engine idle, tire size, gear ratio. Uh, this is you know all the different options that you have. But once you're done messing with everything, you just go here to tire size and then from here you can adjust the tire size that, that your vehicle is reading. So right now it's reading 31.25, which is, I mean, kind of weird because this comes factory with 33s. So we're gonna bump that up to 33 and we're just gonna set it. You can see all my gauges went off, turn ignition off, and just like that, we have modified our tire size. Now why is it important to change the programming on your tire size? Because technically it's kind of like a ratio. The bigger the tire size, the more off your speedo will be, especially on the highway. So let me show you real fast. So we actually have the tire size set to 33 inch tires, which is what comes with factory on the Rubicons. Uh, so far on the back roads here, uh, reading 37, but the actual is 40. 
142 miles an hour so we're a little bit off uh, you can see just on the back roads that it's just a slight you know difference between the speed and what we're actually reading here's where you're going to be seeing a bigger difference on the highway uh, it's 65 here in this area uh, so on the highway you can see doing about 62 63 and uh, almost 10 miles more on the actual GPS so we're reading about 71 70 uh, as opposed to 63 so you can see as we get faster the ratio of our speed being off uh, increases but at slower speeds not such a big deal uh, but once you get up onto the highway speeds where you think you're doing like 70 or 65 70 you're actually doing about 10 to 15 miles more than what your Jeep is reading so that's why I always make sure that when you're going to a bigger tire size to make sure that you are recalibrating it will impact you know how your Jeep reads uh, speeds and your miles per gallon all that kind of stuff Unless you're hand calculating miles per gallon, your Jeep will give you the wrong MPG. Alright, now let's calibrate for the big boys. We'll go 38s. Alright, let's go see how off they are now. Alright, back road, we're doing about 25, 20, uh, let's say 27. And we're at 26 on the GPS, so GPS is a little bit slow. This is staying a little bit faster, but that's alright. Well, let's get onto the highway here. Uh, we're at like 67 on the speedo and up here we're at 64 so it looks like it's not truly 38s for these Toyo MTs they're probably slightly smaller so I adjusted for the 38s they're they're probably over adjusted because they're probably like some weird measurement like 37 and a half or 37.75 uh, so that'll throw it off just a little bit but according to the GPS we're doing 64 and we're doing about 66 67 obviously now the Jeep's guessing like a little bit high instead of being a little bit low so at least you're gonna be going slower than you think you are instead of faster um, however at lower speeds it's pretty much right on uh, the higher speeds it's when it's gonna start getting away from like the actual speed what you're getting uh, if that bothers you you can always tinker around and adjust it to you know a very specific number to where they're gonna be pretty much dead on the entire time again uh, these are probably measured like 37 and a half or 37.75 some weird measurement so we're gonna be about one to five miles per hour off on the highway which isn't all that bad it's better than uh, 10 to 15 miles per hour off uh, especially when you think you're doing 65 but really you're going 75 or 80 uh, and then you start getting like really crazy wobble and you're like why the hell am I passing everybody uh, yeah it's because your speedos off that much okay so quick update I did have to run in and update this uh, because I didn't see anything about the auto start stop uh, turning that off so let's go ahead and plug that in not everything can go right guys uh, I know some some people post on YouTube and it seems like everything goes exactly right but uh I'm here to show you that not everything is perfect all right yeah so we already have different options right off the bat instead of those bigger menus so we have running options vehicle settings service options return to stock and exit so let's go to running options engine idle sway bar unlock line lock oh shit we can get line lock <laughs> okay <laughs> line lock rock crawl lock auto park disabled so we'll go to vehicle settings now we'll go so here's your tire size, gear ratio, transfer case low. There's auto start stop. So disable auto start stop, remove hood sensor to fully disable auto start stop. Right, so basically what that is telling us is if you guys saw my original video when I got the Jeep, the first thing I did was pop the hood and inside here you have these two hood pins. Uh, you're just gonna remove this one on the right hand side and we'll just plug it back in and tuck it off underneath there so what I'm assuming that does is uh, basically when you remove that hood pin it'll shut off the auto start stop but it'll leave a little warning here on the dash that says you know auto start stop isn't working or something it does basically because you took that hood latch out uh, so that's why it's telling you that but what I'm assuming is uh, this little programmer here just kind of takes that 
the little warning out, which is kind of nice because every time you go to drive, uh, one, you don't have to push the auto start stop button to shut it off, and two, you don't get the warning that pops up says auto start stop not working, and then your little dash light up there, so that's pretty neat. And that thing is really simple to use, so uh, if there's anything that you want to try out, I actually do want to try out the line lock, especially for the Wrangler. I don't think I'll have enough power to move these 38s out and do a complete burnout, but it's worth a try since it's part of that module, so we'll check that out. We're actually on our way to the post office. A lot of you guys follow me on Instagram as well here on YouTube, uh, so I want to thank you guys for that first off, but if you guys are following me recently, after Daytona I was cleaning out the Jeep and I ended up finding a whole bunch of stickers uh, from AFAB Cleveland, which is my brother's welding uh, and fabrication, and I asked if anybody wanted some because I had about probably 60 to 100 of them. A lot of you guys blew up the comments and were DMing me about all this stuff and they're just like, yo, send me some, send me one, send me two, send me three. So I wanna thank you guys for that. So because of you guys, we are heading to send those out right now. Well, that was painless. Although I did set my camera down on the counter <laughs> to put the stamps on that uh, I was missing and almost forgot it when I left. The tire pressure was running a little high, so <clears throat> decided to bring it down a little bit. Damn, Gecko. Your fucking pressure gauge is off. Looks like I'm gonna have to re-fucking do it. Closer. And once again, Ohio proves that it can't stay nice for more than an entire day. So I will end it here, guys. Thank you again for following along. If you had not been here before, get down there, hit subscribe, leave this video a big thumbs up, leave some comments below so I can get back to you guys, and we will catch you in the next one.